Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here on Crumpton News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. A large homeless encampment near I-90 in Freya that's been growing for at least 10 months now looks a little bit different today. Washdot crew set up brand new fencing and our Sky 2 drone flew over the encampment as that work was happening. This is a project Washdot and Jules Helping Hands both said was coming. So we turn now to Crem 2's Nathan Hyun, who is live at the camp near I-90 in Freya with an update on today's progress. Nathan. Hey Whitney, yeah, you can see here at the encampment by I-90 and Freya that most of the fencing around the perimeter is set up. We were actually here when they first started putting up the fence this morning. The Washington State Department of Transportation is in charge of installing the fence. For the past week, the people living have made room for the fence by moving RVs and cleaning up trash. Washdot said the fencing is needed to address safety and security both inside the camp and in the surrounding neighborhood. We spoke to one neighbor who said he supported a more controlled environment at the camp. Kind of a way that they're trying to mitigate the situation. It might be a precursor to actually eliminating the camp. I don't think people are going to want to live in a place that's not free. Campers will be required to sign a new list of rules. Some of them include keeping their area clean, not stealing, and adhering to the curfew. Once the fencing is up, the curfew will take effect from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. So Washdot says that the fence should be fully constructed by tomorrow morning. Live in Spokane, Nathan Hyun, Krem 2 News. All right, Nathan, thank you very much. And as of right now, the city of Spokane is reporting four people have tested positive for COVID at the Trent shelter. Those individuals are now being monitored and isolated from the rest of the population staying there as officials work to close that and clear that homeless encampment there along I-90. Many people are being bussed over to the Trent shelter. The city of Spokane says the latest record shows that 150 people are currently staying at the shelter. Their staff are now taking numerous precautions to keep people staying there safer. You'll notice at the shelter that the beds are, are distance apart to create some space and, and separation um, between individuals utilizing the space and that's how the, the four cases were discovered yesterday. The isolation area is in a physically um, different room from the rest of those who are utilizing the space. Spokane Regional Health District tracks COVID cases at the shelter and they also test weekly in an effort to prevent the spread of the virus. And overnight in downtown Spokane, city code enforcement is telling us that a cremt, that a homeless shelter that now has to shut down because of several safety code violations. The shelter is called God's Love International. It opened just in August. Last week, the city, though, sent a letter to the organization giving them until October 14th to make the necessary changes. But earlier this week, officials then discovered a very serious fire code violation. So the fire marshal stepped in and ordered the shelter sh to shut down by today. We have done everything that we can possibly do to meet what they have told me to do, and they keep saying that we haven't. Dozens of people packed up and left that shelter last night. Eight of those people went to the Trent shelter. All right, we want to switch gears now, turn our attention to weather because we are in for a very warm weekend, especially going to feel good after yesterday. Our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Legoo, back from Scary Wood, by the Ooh, way. Yeah. And uh, it looks like you had a lot of fun, but today's weather and really the entire weekend looks like the perfect time to go to Scary Wood. All right, two things before I let you go. Okay. Stick with me here for a second. One, they say that each weekend getting closer to Halloween, it gets busier there, so the okay. earlier the okay. better. And each weekend getting closer to Halloween, it's going to get colder. So in, in the books of Scary Wood, do it now. Yeah, I think that's great advice. The other thing, <laughs> Whitney, I want to talk to you about uh, high temperatures yesterday. Where do you think we topped out? It was not very warm, so I'm going to say somewhere in the 50s. You are absolutely correct. Now, okay. it, gets, it gets weird, so <laughs> let's go ahead and dive into this, and I'll just explain it quick. Our official high temperature for yesterday was 66 degrees, but believe it or not, we hit that shortly after midnight. Kind of wild to think about. Yesterday afternoon, we kind of hovered around 56 degrees, so about 10 degrees cooler than the actual high for the day, which happened in the middle of the night. Right now, this is why we're getting to this. Right now, we sit in the mid 60s, 64 degrees, and it's likely we do bump up a few more now that we get sunshine. We're back to almost mostly sunny skies across the region, and that's warming us up. Look at the temperatures out in central Washington. 
We are up in the 70s, still in the 60s, and even a couple of 50s dotted in here. So yes, it's a bit cooler here locally, but we are going to bump those temps up as our ridge of high pressure continues to build in. Storm works its way out of the region. High pressure builds in, and that's what's going to bump our temperatures up the next couple of days. Overnight, we'll fall back down into the upper 40s or mid to upper 40s, and by Saturday afternoon, we are once again in the upper 70s. It's looking like a beautiful weekend. Sunday, looking even sunnier somehow. I'll walk you through it in just a bit. Sounds pretty good, Jeremy. Thank you. In some of our other top stories today, one of the women who was sexually assaulted by a former Spokane police officer, Nathan Nash, is now seeking a million dollars in damages from the city. The victim claims the city's hiring, training and supervision of Nash was inadequate and the cause of her injuries. She says there were substantial red flags in his conduct that were ignored. According to the claim, the city allowed Nash to use his power as a police officer to prey on women he encountered during his duties. Nash was convicted on two counts of rape at the end of August. He's set to be sentenced here in a few weeks on October 13th. He is also facing additional charges of official misconduct. His next hearing on that charge is on October 6th. Overnight, Idaho State Police are investigating a crash that left one woman dead on I-90 near Post Falls. A 74-year-old female and 32-year-old male collided in a head-on crash. Both drivers were taken to the hospital. The female, though, died shortly after. ISP says several other vehicles were also damaged from driving over debris from that crash. Some devastating news out of Pullman. WSU basketball player Miles Rice has been diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's a rare form of cancer that will now take the 19 year old out of the upcoming season. Rice released a statement yesterday saying I will beat this heinous disease. His family started a GoFundMe also to help cover his treatment. You can find that link on our website. Just go to crem.com. Recovery efforts continue this afternoon to recover the wreckage of that float plane that crashed into the Puget Sound earlier this month. Some of those victims have been brought back to the surface now, and the wreckage has been sitting on the sea floor under nearly 200 feet of water. Crews will be working for the next several days to make sure they find all of the downed aircraft. So far, the NTSB says it's been able to recover about 80% of the wreckage, including the engine, one wing, the propeller, and the gearbox. The plane, though, did not have a flight data record and it did not have a cockpit voice recorder. There was substantial damage to the plane already. And so uh, it is difficult bringing it up uh, uh, as we recover it, but uh, the crane operator did a tremendous job and the whole team did a tremendous job getting everything we needed in a, in a, in a, in a place where we can uh, begin to look it over and we were able to identify what we needed to continue to look for. The NTSB says battling the current has actually been the biggest delay in this process. Once it is all out of the water, the plane will then be taken to a site where it is painstakingly put back together to be analyzed. It could take up to two years before they declare the official cause of that crash. The plane itself was flying from Friday Harbor to Renton Municipal Airport when it crashed on September 4th with these 10 victims on board, nine adults and one child. So far, one body was recovered. That was right after the crash. And among the victims includes Spokane's Sandy Williams and her partner, Patricia Hicks. Some good news for workers following a voter passed incentive. The Washington state minimum wage has now been raised to 15.74 an hour. It will go into effect this coming January as workers will see a dollar 25 raise in their current salary. It's directly linked to the cost of common goods such as housing, food and medical care shown in the consumer price index. Well, here is what's coming up on Creme 2 Plus tonight. Make sure and join us after Creme 2 News at 6. We've got a Boomtown special as we look at some of the creative solutions to our area's uh, housing shortage. And you'll have another chance to watch our evening news and weather coming up at 9 o'clock. And all this week, right after Creme 2 News at 11, our looked, Locked on Zags team is previewing former Bulldogs who are now playing in the NBA. And tonight, what to expect from Brandon Clark. Moving on. That's just 
a little sneak peek of what you'll find on Krem 2 Plus. Still ahead tonight, the head of the nation's cyber defense agency visiting Seattle. Find out how they're trying to help local businesses. And the Mariners now inching closer to a playoff berth this season. What the team still needs to do, though, to break that 21-year dry spell.